right? We're going to start with the nation. Tinubu, right today is ahead. There's a picture here of um, the flag off in just for the rallies. There's a Buhari Adamo governor's rally voters for APT candidate at campaign kickoff in just. President makes case for Tinubu Shetima victory. Six Bureau of Insurance operators arrested. 26 Nigerians, foreigners arraigned for all theft. Three local operators rejected Nigeria Air offer. Obi to Soludo, I performed as a trader. <coughs> Let's see your work as a professor. Mm. Okay, which story are we starting with? So, go ahead. Major headline. So, <laughs> um, the presidential aspirant for APC has flagged off um, his campaign in Jos. While he was there, he made the promise that um, there will be brighter days ahead of Nigeria, that his administration, if elected in the next year's poll, would bring brighter days for us as a country. He also mentioned that the, the election next year is a fight not to leave Nigeria to looters. Um, in the campaign, he spoke about how he would be building up on what has already been done on ground. The president also lauded his democratic credentials, his foresight, ability to take bold decision and capacity for economic management. That's from the president talking about Ashwajibola Metinobu. Essentially, it was a successful campaign based on the pictures, and a lot of people were saying that a lot, a lot, a lot of supporters came out for him yeah. and um, talking about how they are going to win the election and it will be a good thing for Nigeria. All right, so <clears throat> six bureau de change operators have been arrested by the Lagos, in Lagos State Police over the alleged kidnap of a three-year-old colleague's, um, so actually, for their colleague's eight-year-old daughter. So what happened was that they tied this child's hands and legs and they put her in a sack. Mm -hmm. And the suspects were Nasir Mohammed, 29 years old, <coughs> Abdullahi Usman, 30, Saidu Abbas, 32, Abu Bakr, 25, just young people. Mm -hmm. So they kidnapped, they didn't tell, they don't give us a motive of why they kidnapped, but the, the, the child was able to escape and then identify the house where he was taken to. Wow. And then was able to, able to make arrest in Lagos. So, Preliminary, preliminary investigation reveals that the suspects were, were fellow members, colleagues of her father hmm. uh, in Buru de Church, and they don't know why that happened in the first place. It will definitely be for money reasons. I wanted to take the oil theft um, ship story. So according to the nation and the representative of the Ministry of Justice in Abuja, this is in Kiruka Jones' neighbor, they said that the 27 in total, so 26 people, um, other suspects are standing trial. And they said they, um, one of the captain, one other person, on board the rogue vessel that entered the nation's maritime environment August, 20, August 7th this year, I was standing trying to understand the risk of being convicted to life imprisonment for, you know, entering our territorial waters. And the um, Nigerian Navy said that that vessel has a is 33, 336 meters long and has the capacity to carry 3 million barrels of crude oil. Mm. And so I'm hopeful that, you know, we'll see this conviction or we'll see the prosecution to a, a conclusive end and more others like that so that this oil theft issue will be stemmed with consequences and people will be deterred from it. Yeah, so the Federal yeah. High Court in Lagos yesterday granted an interim injunction restraining the federal government and Ethiopian airlines from proceeding with the establishment of the proposed national carrier. You know, we've been talking about how Nigeria is planning to have its own carrier and everything was you know, going smoothly till then. But the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, uh, yesterday said the refusal of local airlines to invest in a new national carrier pushed the federal government to solicit buying from foreign airlines, uh, that's um, including Ethiopian airlines, because they wanted to carry this on. And he said there was no going back on the delivery of the national carrier, uh, that they've been attempts by <coughs> some interest groups, including indigenous carriers, to abort the project through uh, this uh, legal intervention and going back and forth, but that would not happen. He said they had conversations and they, you know, they went to three um, airlines. I want to quickly mention their names here. Uh, that was uh, Air Peace, Asman Air, and Max Air. But they turned down the invitation, uh, giving the excuse that the request was not formally conveyed to them. And so they had no other choice than to go to the foreign airlines to get a buy-in into this. They said, we also need foreign direct investment. So if the local uh, airlines are not willing to participate and take part in this, local um, international airlines can be a part of this. What remains is that Nigeria owns 100% of the investment. Any other person is allowed to come in and invest. Okay, we'd like to hear from the Local players. The, airlines, yeah. the punch. <clears throat> Tinubu campaign. VIPs hit play two with 30 private and charter <coughs> jets. Ngige hates Asu, responsible for half pay lecturers. His lecturers. 
So Lodo's position doesn't reflect Southeast stand, says Obi. Can meet Tinubu at Tiku Obi today. Court halts Nigeria Air Minister says uh, project unstoppable. <coughs> Exposed criminals on the Lagos Ibado Expressway, IG tells communities. Road the change operators kidnap colleagues, eight year old child in Lagos. Diri Carpets Minister for downplaying um, Bayosa flood. Nigeria's population hits 260 million. Mm -hmm. Okay, which story are we starting with? Lecturers <coughs> uh, in different parts of the country yesterday protested against the uh, no work, no pay uh, policy that was imposed on them. You know, they had resumed in October and um, they were paid a quarter or half of their salary. And so they went out into the streets. They were uh, joined by some civil societies and also uh, University of Lagos students. So they had um, inscriptions and banner, which they wrote. Some of them wrote in Gige, be mindful of history. <laughs> As we outlive you. Teachers teach the nation, but in Gige cheats the teachers. No work, no pay, and prorated salaries are punitive measures against renegotiated agreements, amongst others. And they kept on blaming Ngige for everything that has happened. I want to mention some of the things they said. They said Ngige is the agent of provocateur. He's the one instigating the government against ASU. He has inexplicable hatred against our union, and that is the reason he turned our struggle to a personal fight. It was Ngige who poisoned fake against our union. Ngige started a campaign of no work, no pay uh, policy, and also uh, they said um, Ngige was the one who dragged ASU before the court and mm. all those things that he did. And, you know, they are calling on the federal government to do something. They should yeah. not allow um, <clears throat> Nigerians see ASU as the devil, mm. that they are, not the ones who, they, are the, they are not the ones who are stopping the education of their children, but the federal government needs to pay them so that they are happy to get back to class and teach these students. All right. In the words of the late RDJ Avant, is it a Jean Provocateur? Mm. Jean Provocateur. <laughs> well, all right. The United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs says that Nigeria have increased in population to 116 million. 216. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> 216 million in 2022. Mm. Wow. And they said that we are accounting for about 2.7% of the global population now. And they also said that the world's population has also gone up to 8 billion. Mm. And... They projected just a few countries responsible for about um, uh, half of this projection. So they said that Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, sorry, <coughs> Egypt, Ethiopia, India, Nigeria, Pakistan, the Philippines, and the United Republic of Tanzania are responsible for this half projection, projected increase in the world's population. Mm. And uh, it's a good thing. Uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Center of Promotion <laughs> of Private Enterprise, Dr. Muda Yusuf, now says that you see, this can be positive and then negative. Yeah, but yeah. if we don't capitalize on this growth in the population yeah, yeah. to improve in certain inf infrastructure, facilities, motivate youth to employment, it can be counterproductive for us. Still reviewing punch. Um, the Labour Party presidential candidate Peter B has said that Governor of uh, Brown Brassley, Professor Charles Tulu, is his brother and friend, that he respects everything he has said. I mean, he was saying, he was referring to what Professor Saludo had said, that if the investment Peter B left in Anambra is worthless, you know, he was responding, saying that he's his brother, he's not going to object to what he's saying, but he has done, he has been successful <coughs> as a trader. He also let us know what he can do as, um, as a professor. He was saying that... Um, he has his own opinion, and his opinion might not be the opinion of the entire state of Anambra. He believes that his, his position is definitely not, doesn't reflect the entire uh, um, Southeast. But he respects his opinion because his opinion is a, is a respected person and is a governor. So I think that's pretty much what he said. And he also then um, defended what he had left behind in, in Anambra State based on, um, on the fact that he left about, I think it was 7 billion, 75 billion naira left in the account, and he had invested 3.5 billion naira in international breweries. Which unfortunately, according to Soludo, became worthless eventually. All right. So I want to take the point? story. Um, of course, we know that there's insecurity challenges within the Lagos Ibado Expressway. A few kidnappings are taking place there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, has directed reorganizing of that um, security architecture within that area. The commissioners of police in charge of Lagos, Ogun, or your state commands, had a briefing on security. Um, the security situation within Lagos Ibado Expressway. And um, IG Osman Baba was saying that they, they need information from the communities to mention the people. He said it should, they should um, expose criminals because obviously they are coming out from the communities that live off the expressway. 
Reacting to this, the area of Nokakanfo of Yoruba land, um, Ibagani Adam said that the Southwest security stakeholders um, are available to work with the police, that nowhere in the world do they confront challenges with only the legal, um, the, 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 with only government security agencies, that you cannot tackle insecurity with only government political, I mean, only government security agencies, and that they are willing to work with um, the police to ensure that there's better security on the highway. I'm going to appeal that the IG of police has a meeting with the hunters. The community people would only come and work with you. So he said, we have security coalition consisting of the vigilantes, the Agbekoyas, hunters, OPC, Ishokon Yoruba, and we are 11 groups that came together to structure in all the local government areas within the Yoruba land. I think it's important the government talks with, to add as many people as possible to see how we can secure more people. That's a very okay. huge transit. Moving on quickly to Daily Sun, nobody should die for Atiku Tinubu Obi, other says Kuka. Obi hits back at Saludo. Kogi wins World Bank's Fiscal Transparency Revenue Mobilization Award. <coughs> Naseni asks NUC NBTE to review entrepreneurship curriculum to higher institutions. Kwari canvasses flexible energy transition for Nigeria and others. <coughs> will Lasha Tinubu's victory pledge Buhari Lawan Adamu? Hope is back, Nigeria will be well, says APC candidate. Senatorial ticket Akwabi runs to Supreme Court. 2023 editors resolve to put political actors on their toes. And we're not insensitive to security challenges on Lagos Department of Expressway, says IGP. <coughs> okay, which story? Okay, major headline. Um, Bishop Hooker, I love the way he captioned this, says that, you know, <coughs> nobody should die for Atiku, Obi, or Tinubu, and other uh, presidential aspirants. He says that since the lifting of the ban against the um, um, campaigns was done in, on in September uh, on September 28th you've we, we've seen intemperate language intimidation outright violence particularly among supporters of all the presidential aspirants across parties and I did a post about two spokespersons for both uh, opposing parties yesterday and you know the way they talk their utterances their language can be so incitive along religious and ethnic lines and I like the way he captioned, he said, following the video of um, the, the presidential aspirant of the PDP and that of the APC at the VIP lounge in the, at the airport in Abuja, you can see that they have familiarities and they are friends. Mm. If you go and kill yourself, go and die because of you know, go. the way people talk and you know, take sides on these issues, mm. election will come and go and you know, people will remain. Mm. And so we should calm down and you know, just put along our beliefs and conscience and let every other person live their lives, no, yes. no fighting. I, I, so I the president that. of the Christian body, Khan, um, his eminence, Archbishop Daniel Oko, has said that they will be having a dialogue with all the major political parties towards the elections. According to him, this dialogue was important. Um, I'm trying to get his exact words. According to him, the dialogue is to ensure that all the presidential candidates clearly understand the, the, the concerns <coughs> of the Nigerian Christians and propose policy and programs to address them. They believe that this kind of respectful dialogue would give sincere con conversation that will have everlasting solutions. So, and I think it's starting with uh, Shiraji Bolamid Tinumbu today. He's going to be speaking to all the major candidates across board. I would really like to hear um, their, 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 about the conversation because I know that they're adamant mm -hmm. that they're still opposed to the Muslim Muslim ticket. But however, this dialogue they've, they've agreed to have might be able to change things and let people see the objectivity in everybody's campaign propositions. Okay, so the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NACENI, yesterday said the National Universities Commission, NUC, National Board for Te Technical Education, MBTE, <coughs> and National Commission for Colleges of Education, NCCE, has to review the curriculum for entrepreneurship courses in order to address unemployment uh, of graduates. So he said some of the graduates were jobless because of misalignment between products of tertiary institutions and limited job market. He said there's an ongoing skills acquisition center nationwide, which is aimed at tackling this problem of unemployment and industrial development. However, they have to find a way to ensure that uh, teachers or lecturers who lecture entrepreneurship must have businesses. Uh, they said there are no qualified lecturers uh, who lecture in these universities. So you cannot not be a businessman and then be lecturing mm -hmm. business. There's no way you're going to impact that knowledge. And so uh, they have to review their cu curriculum to ensure that we have qualified lecturers who are in the field of business. And I agree with them. Also, aside from that, we also need to get um, a lot of uh, inventory, um, 
incentives given to businessmen. We know that in five years, if your business is lucky to survive, you are very lucky, and it mm -hmm. also may die out in 10 years. So the government needs to do more to ensure that we have a lot of factories, and how you can do that is by supporting individuals who are into business. Give them a lot of incentives, so that when you finish that your industrial <laughs> training, they, they have, have where, to go. where to be absorbed. The okay. students who are coming out have factories and manufacturing um, agencies to be absorbed in, and yeah. then you don't have people, because I have seen a lot of people who have been trained either by government or civil societies, and yet they don't have anywhere That's to right. work so or we deploy those they skills. They have to build ecosystems for this thing. Yeah. Not everybody must have something, even tomatoes. I mean, I yeah. Not everybody so can do can business do. on their yeah. own. Okay. The, the um, GMD, I have a story. The group chief executive officer of the Nigerian um, NNPC PLC, Malam Melikiari, has said that there's need to um, tr transition into flexible energy. He mentioned the fact that due to the Russia-Ukraine crisis, there's been a little bit of mm. demand for uh, um, crude, but that there needs to be more to be done. That most of Nigeria, actually, he said the, that um, 970 million Africans lack access to, cook, to clean cooking gas, and that there needs to be a migration energy mix. Mm. But one important information he gave was that funding the crude oil sector has become really tough, because many investors are not putting their money into anything that has to do with crude oil they are rather putting their money into anything that has to do with renewable energy. So funds are going into renewable energy. There's a universal acceptance of the need to reduce <laughs> CO2 emission due to climate change. So we must, even if there's a, we're seeing money coming in a little bit now, we must have a plan to transit into clean energy. And okay. we're waiting Papa. to see what that transition Banga will quickly. look like. 2023 is fight to define Nigeria's soul, says Tinumbo. 2023, Obi replies to Ludo, says, I've governed as a trader, you govern as professor. Um, Kiari canvasses flexible energy transition for Nigeria and others. Asu begins protest against no work, no pay policy. Forex Nigerians should determine what's appropriate for Nigeria, says IMF. NCC sets new FG spectrum <coughs> license for $273.6 million operators kick. Kuka Kosher supporters don't die for politicians. Court stops Nigeria as takeoff. 2023, stand with Khan, we stand with Khan on the Muslim Muslim ticket, says Catholic Knights. Okay. So I think I most of the stories here. Yes, Let me just take, um, the Knights, quickly, right. in a very short story. So um, the Knights of St. Mulumba, Nigeria, saying that they are throwing their weight behind the position of the Christian Association of Nigeria on the Muslim Muslim ticket. You know, Khan has said that they were not in support of that. So they had um, a gathering, and then they were fielding questions from... Um, you know, journalists, and they said that they are in support of whatever Khan has, you know, said. They are supporting Khan's position, that they have a lot of their members who they, you know, uh, advise to get into politics. And when they get into politics, they really can't detect uh, where they have to face or who they have to follow. But whatever Khan says, they are going to do. And they're going to be having another meeting where they will deliberate on um, advocacy, ensuring that everything is done within justice, fairness, and equity. Okay. okay, so the IMF representative in Nigeria, uh, Mr. Ais Ari Eisen, says that, you know, um, a clear autonomy for the CBN when it comes to issues of determining what our foreign exchange will be, our monetary policy um, will be, is what is the, way we, the gateway out of these issues of um, foreign, uh, forex, foreign exchange wahala that we are having, you know, the up and down of the the dollar to the naira, and he says that um, they need to be able, the CBN needs to be able to decide monetary policies in the country. Issues around foreign exchange regimes are complex, and it should, it should be their total. And I don't think I, I I wanted to read to the end to see if there's any other body that determines that. Mm. But you know, of course, we might have other ways that this uh, this is determined. But I think clearly it should be the prerogative of the CBN. And it should be done directly through the banks. And one straight single exchange rate should be what we have. And mm. this back and forth growth is only giving a few ways to profit from the. Nobody took Kogi's story. Kogi winning the mm. World Bank's fiscal transparency. Mm. 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 Didn't take a hard, I would have liked to. It was a very sure. straightforward we story. We have to run. We don't have any, any other story that strikes anybody. Mm. Okay, I guess that's all we can take on front page review. Mm.